Author and pastor Tommy Nelson, many of you guys know that name, Tommy Nelson, he pastors a church down in, in Texas. He's an incredible uh, pastor. Uh, he, he's written some incredible books. One day he um, walked into his favorite diner, something that he, he often did, um, this diner just down the road from the church where he served, as he does almost daily, certainly weekly, he walked in. He took his place at the counter where he normally sits, and the waitress, who is a Christian, I should add, and who over the years has probably engaged Pastor Nelson in probably a million-plus Christian conversations, she came and poured him his routine cup of coffee. But the pastor noticed something. He noticed a kind of a, a slight change in her demeanor. And so he turns and he says to her, Janet, what's going on? What's happening? caught a little bit off guard, she finally composed herself and she said, wow, wow, you must be, uh, uh, you must have a really, really busy day today, pastor. No pleasantries, just right to the point, eh? And then she says, pastor, I would really appreciate it if you would speak to the ladies at your church. Okay, said the pastor, this can't be good. What's going on? Pastor, several of your ladies after church on Sundays, nearly every Sunday, they come here to eat. The problem is they are anything, anything but kind to our waitresses. They, they, they almost like treat them like they're a hired help, seriously. Like they are second-rate citizens second-rate people. Now, Pastor, as you know, I have been trying to minister to these ladies now for several months. But now, everything that I say to them is drowned out and is forgotten on Sunday afternoons, usually by about 1.30 on Sundays. My message is drowned out by the way your ladies at your church, church-going Christians, are depicting Christianity to my waitresses. I'm no longer making progress. In fact, for several weeks, I've been on damage control. Everyone go, oh. Not the kind of thing a pastor wants to hear, is it? Guys, do you remember last week I told you guys a story about Brody? Do you remember that story? Brody who spent um, a couple of months trying to convince his neighbor to come to church with him. I mean, that's really what we're called to do, right? We're called to, to, to go out into all the world and, and tell people about Jesus, invite them to come to know Jesus, that sort of thing. Well, Brody was doing that. He had been working hard spent a couple of months trying to get his neighbor to come to church, and finally, after it seemed the neighbor would never say yes to coming, the neighbor agreed. He agreed. But after Brody and his neighbor entered the church, the neighbor saw Travis. You all remember Travis from last week's story? Brody's neighbor had actually been in Travis's house the prior week. Because he was a plumber and he, he went to Travis's house to, to fix a plumbing problem. The thing is, is in the 15 years of being a plumber, making literally thousands of house calls, Brody's neighbor could never remember a time when he was treated so poorly, with less value, with less dignity than he did when working at Travis's house. This same Travis that he saw at church, this Travis who was supposedly a Christian. And as a result, everyone say that, as a result, Brody's neighbor never returned to the church, or for that matter, any church. Guys, listen to me. The problem is very simply this. God wants to use us. He wants to use you, and he wants to use me. He wants to use all of us to minister to and to witness to those who don't know about God, who don't know about God's love through Jesus Christ. But instead of seeing God's love through us, 
Instead of seeing God working in us and working through us, instead of seeing that, what they often see, what these non-Christians often see, can I say that one more time, what these non-Christians often see when they look at those who, who profess faith in, in, in Jesus Christ, what they often see is a far cry from the love that God has called us to have for others, including the lost. And guys, the Old Testament book of Daniel, I think, is by far and away one of the, the, the most incredible books in the Bible. And just in the fact that it does such an amazing job, it gives such an amazing example of how God wants to use his faithful servants to minister and to reach the lost. It describes in incredible detail how God wants to use who? His faithful servants. His faithful servants to minister and to reach the lost. And guys, I believe in particular, he is calling us today to reach the very, very, very lost. So as we talked about last week, the people of God, the Israelites, okay, the people that, that chose to follow God, as we talked about last week, the people of God who chose to follow God have turned away. They turned away from God. And instead, they chose to embrace the sinful and the destructive ways of the world. And even though God called them to repent, to return to Him, and, and to return to the kind of lives that would bring them peace and joy and fulfillment, all these good things, the far, far, far majority of these Israelites refused. They just didn't want to. They enjoyed, if I can say it this way, kind of being the people of God, even though they weren't faithful. But they also enjoyed chasing after the things and the desires of this world. They wanted the best of both. They wanted what they thought, anyway, was the best of both. They refused to repent. They refused to, to turn back to him. They continued to live lives that increased their problems and their brokenness and increased the growing distance between them and God. Now, guys, please, do you not see the similarities of that in today's world? Because really, this book of Daniel is a depiction and a description of today's world. Period. Simply that. And so God chose to do something. And I think, you know, what he chose to do surprised everybody. Even to this day, I think many Christians have a hard time understanding what God did. God allowed and God used those who were far, far more sinful than even the Israelites to attack the Israelites to attack those who once followed God but chose to turn away. Guys, God used the most sinful people imaginable to attack those who once followed God, who arguably still kind of followed God, but who also engaged in their worldly, earthly far less than godly desires. You know, guys, do you remember the, the story of Jonah? Do you remember how the story of Jonah began? God came to Jonah and said, Jonah, right? You all remember that from Bill Cosby? Actually, I guess that was Noah, wasn't it? Well, maybe he did both, Noah, you know, but in this time it was Jonah, right? Jonah, I need you to do something. I need you to go to... Nineveh. I need you to speak to the? Yeah, very good. The Ninevites. See, I threw you a curveball and you whacked it. That's great. Um, and I need you to tell them that they need to repent 
Because if they don't repent, I need you to tell them about me. And if they, they choose not to accept me, I'm going to turn them into toast. How did Jonah respond to, to God's message to him? Did he want to go to Nineveh? No, he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Why didn't he want to go to Nineveh? Was he afraid the Ninevites were going to like, you know, put him in jail for saying bad things about him and stuff? Was that what it was? No, that's not what it was at all. Jonah was afraid to go to Nineveh because he was honestly and truly he was afraid that the Ninevites might actually turn and repent and come to know God. And Jonah hated the Ninevites. And he hated the Ninevites because the Ninevites had been a horrible people to the Israelites. I mean, they mocked the God of Israel. They, they did all kinds of, you know, they, they came in and they, they often invaded their, their, their borders, all kinds of stuff. And Jonah didn't want to go. Guys, I'm going to tell you, um, the Ninevites were like, you know, a bunch of Boy Scouts compared to the Babylonians. The Babylonians were some of the most sinful people that the world had ever known, had ever known. Why did I take my glasses off? All right. God used the Babylonians, the most sinful people imaginable, to attack the Israelites, those who were probably the, the closest people to God in the world. Seems like today, probably America might be considered some of the, the closest people to the Lord. All right, guys, most of you know, or at least are familiar with John 3.16. John 3.16, there it is. <laughs> Good old Randy. You guys are familiar with this verse, aren't you? It's one of the most important verses in the Bible. But guys, I want to remind you of another very, very, everyone say very, a very important verse in the Bible, another one. And I'm going to help you so that you won't forget it, all right? Yes, John 3, 16, say that, John 3, 16 is very, very important. But guys, we also need to know the verse from Revelation 3, 16. And you need to probably put this to memory, just as you have John 3.16. Revelation 3.16 is a strange verse. It's a hard verse. It's a very, very misunderstood verse. It says, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Now, guys, these are Jesus' words, okay? These are Jesus' words. And he is talking about people, people just like us. And he is basically saying that there are people who are hot. And there are people who are cold. And there are people who are lukewarm. And guys, it's probably kind of easy to realize that the hot people, the hot people are those who are truly dedicated to following God truly dedicating to honoring God with their lives. And most people, I think, most people assume that those who are cold are those who are very worldly, following after their sinful desires, indulging in their, their lustful things, you know, whatever that might look like, while caring very, very little for others. But here's my question. What about those who are lukewarm? How would you, how should we describe these people? And guys, listen to me. The thing is, maybe you think you know the answer to this. But I am afraid what you think isn't entirely right, isn't entirely correct. Now, most people, when they read this passage, they think the hot people are those who are very obedient to God. The cold are, again, those who are very sinful. And the lukewarm are, are those somewhere in between. 
right? That's what most people, I believe, think. And the truth is, guys, I really just don't at all see that. And I don't think that that is at all the case. So this morning, I would like for us to, to, to make this very, very clear. Let's make sure that there is no misunderstanding it today. And I think when we're done, you will all agree. Those who are hot, everyone say the word hot. Those who are hot are the people who have been told the message of God's word. It's twofold. Okay, number one, those who are hot are those who have been told the message of God's word. And number two, have embraced it and are fully dedicated to it. They have heard the message of God and they have received it and have embraced it and are following the word of God. Those people are what? They are hot. Like my wife. The hottie in more ways than one now those who are cold everyone say cold I didn't hear everyone those who are cold now listen to me now listen to me those who are cold are simply those who have not been told the message of God and the message of God's Word Period. Period. No, Pastor, you're wrong. I don't think so. Now, these people that are cold, are they sinful people? Yeah. Um, we're all pretty sinful people, them included. Um, are they probably more sinful than perhaps, well, most everyone else? Yeah, probably. Um, quite possible, quite possible, maybe even likely. But what makes them cold, what makes them cold is not knowing. What makes them cold is not being told about the things of God. That what, that's what makes them cold. They've not had life. There is no life in them. They're cold. Now, what about those who are lukewarm? Guys, listen to me. The lukewarm are not those in between the hot and the cold, but rather they are a mixture, a mixture of hot and cold. And here's what I mean. They are people who have been told the message of God's word. They have heard it. They have been told it. But even though they have heard it, they continue to live as those who have not heard it. Instead of embracing God's word, instead of abiding by God's word, they continue to live their lives following the world rather than truly following God. These are the people who are lukewarm. And guys, this becomes much more clear to us when we look at verse 15, when we put verse 15 in front of verse 16. Jesus said it very clearly. Jesus said, I know your ways. I know who you are. I know your, your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. Now, look at this. He says, I wish you are either one or the other. I wish that you were either one or the other. Guys, this last part of 15 is so confusing to people because they think, they think that Jesus is saying, I, I wish you either had no sin in your life or were completely full of sin. Now, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Not at all. It doesn't make any sense because the focus of this verse, of these verses, are, is, is not about sin. It's not about sin, but whether a person has been told about God, 
and whether they've been told about God's love for them and God's plan to redeem them. Guys, here is the absolute bottom line as clear as I know how to explain what these two verses are saying. It's a paraphrase. I'm going to try to paraphrase Jesus. Yeah, good luck with that, Pastor Jeff, right? But here's my best attempt. These are Jesus' words in, in my paraphrase. I want people to be hot. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus is saying, I want people to be hot. That is the goal. That is the end result of, 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 of what everything you know, that's taking place, is, is taking place for, so that people will have an opportunity to become hot, to be hotties. Don't you want to be a hottie? You guys aren't even familiar with that term. That's all right. I'm so excited. Jesus is saying, I want people to be hot. But if they're not going to be hot, I'd rather them be cold. I'd rather them not having been told about God's love, about God's redemptive plan for their lives. Because if they were cold, if they hadn't heard about God's love, then you know what? At least then the sin in their lives would make sense. But being lukewarm knowing God's love, knowing that how he, he sent his son to die to, to redeem us, knowing God's love and, and yet rejecting it because you rather love the sinful things of the world more than, 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 than the things of God, that is nothing less than a rejection of God for which there is no excuse. And guys, this is exactly, no doubt, what is being described here in this book of Daniel. The people who, who once chose to follow God, these Israelites, though they had been told about God and God's love for them, many of them, though they once were hot, and guys, I'm telling you, just because you're, you're, you're one temperature doesn't mean that, that you can't, you know, change back and forth. That's going on all the time, and that's happening right now in America like crazy. The people who once followed God, though they once were hot, they chose to turn away from God. They chose to follow after the things of the world more than the things of God. But there were those, and unfortunately, it was only a few. And I don't know how many, you know, Israelites there were and, and how many of those Israelites remained faithful. But the fact is, the Bible tells us that there were those among the Israelites, people like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And if you don't recognize those names, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but we're going to call them by their Hebrew names and not their Babylon names that were given them. There were a remnant of faithful people who refused to turn from God, thus remaining hot. Remaining hot. But they were the exception, unfortunately. The far, far, far majority of the Israelites had become lukewarm. And the fact is, and this may blow your mind a little bit, God had more compassion on the Babylonians. Because even though they were far more sinful, their sinfulness came out of not knowing or not understanding the message of God not understanding God's love to redeem the lost and the broken. So God had a whole lot more compassion on them than those who had been told about God and chose to become lukewarm. So what did God do? Now, guys, listen to me. I said this last week. I told Amy. She read the sermon 
after what was done and he said amy i preached the exact same sermon two weeks in a row and she goes huh and the fact is is i i am whether you're realizing it or not so what did god choose to do and what i'm telling you is god did what i believe god is doing again right now god allowed those who have not been told of god those who are cold god allowed those people and i believe god is now allowing those people to overpower those who are lukewarm today the lukewarm and our world are being judged because they have no excuse they have been told they have heard but that's not all that god did and is doing the truth is god is using the few and i hate that that it's only a few but god is using the few who have remained hot to speak to those today today who are cold God is, is revealing himself to those who have not truly heard the message of God's love. And for those who are cold, who truly embrace it, they become hot, hot, hotties, if you will, like those who have shared God's message to them. But for those who hear, those who are cold, for those who are cold and who hear but yet choose to rather embrace their sins, they too are changed. They no longer remain cold, but they too become what? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Guys, listen to me. This was the message for the Israelites. Are you hot or are you lukewarm? This was the message for the Babylonians who were cold. You can become hot or you become lukewarm. This is how it was. This was the message for the teachers of the law in Jesus' day, the Pharisees and the rest of the people of Jesus' day. Jesus looked upon the crowd. He looked at the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. And what did he say? You are lukewarm and he told them that they should repent and become hot but they refused and yet Jesus went to the prostitutes who were cold to the centurion Roman guards who were cold to to the woman caught in the act of adultery who was cold and he spoke to them and he opened their eyes to see God's message of redemption and they became hot even though the teachers of the law remained lukewarm guys there are still unfortunately I believe a few but there are still those who are hot and there are still many today, many today who are cold. But like in the law of thermodynamics, today there are many, many, many who have become lukewarm. And there's one last thing that we absolutely need to be sure of. One last thing that you absolutely need to hear before we finish up and go our ways. God will use those who are hot to speak truth to all who are cold the bible says that number two for that reason for that reason the cold will no longer remain cold 
Either they will become hot like those who share God's message with them, or they will become lukewarm. You can be absolutely assured of that as well. But number three is the one that, that, that is the one that should get our attention and probably cause us to shudder a little bit. Regarding the lukewarm, God's word is clear. A time is coming when he will spew the lukewarm out of his mouth and be done with. Now, my friends, God's word again today has been clearly given, has been clearly spoken. For those who would allow God as flaming the flame within those whose desire is to embrace God and to be hot. The question is, is that what you desire? Last week I said it to you, I reminded you that Jesus' words, not Paul, not Peter, not, I don't know, Bartholomew or whoever, you know, any of those guys, but Jesus' word, he spoke to his disciples and he said to them very clearly, he said, guys, you needed to tell people that the path that leads to, to God is, is a narrow path. And that the gate that they are to go through is a small gate. And only a few enter through it. Jesus said you, can have, you cannot serve two gods. You can only have one who is king. That throne does not have enough room for multiple kings or gods. We were created to serve and choose only one. And the problem is so many in the, the church across our country, but also across the world today, are desperately seeking to serve multiple gods it's not that they, they don't have Bibles. It's not that they haven't heard. They have heard. They have heard. They have heard. But instead of truly choosing to follow, they ride to the fence. They're not truly alive, not truly dead, just lukewarm. Can I pray for you this morning? Father, I know that you allowed these words to come to my mind because I needed to hear them or I needed to be reminded of them. It is a hard and challenging world. And distractions all around us. It seems like the only time we, we hear truth or the, the few hours that we're together here in, 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 in church or when we sit down to, to read our Bibles. And even then, I suspect we probably don't spend as much time or as concentrated uh, time in your word as we, we should. And it seems like the rest of the time we're, we're hearing noise and static and lies. Father God, it's so easy to be lukewarm. It's so easy to, to gravitate towards that, this law of spiritual thermomatics, if, if I can say it that way. Lord, we, we want to be your faithful people. And Lord, we confess to you today, Lord, that we have sinned. We have fallen short often of the, the, the good things that you want for us. Lord, would you forgive us? Would you cleanse us and wash us? Would you hear our prayer? Father God, would you, would you just allow us, strengthen us, help us to put the things in place that, that, that need to be there so that we can remain just red, hot, glowing people for you. 
That's our, our prayer. That's our desire. Will you hear each prayer today? Lord, help us. That's what we want. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, um, I think you should go this morning knowing that God wants to use you because there are many, many people all around you that are cold. They've just not heard. And um, he wants to use you. He longs to use you. And, uh, you know, I would encourage you this week, pick up your Bibles, go through. You can read the book of Daniel in probably, I would say, an hour, 15 minutes maybe, you know. We'll come back next week. We'll look at another truth from uh, Daniel. But uh, God bless you guys. And may the Lord go with you and give you strength as you um, serve as his, uh, as his mouthpiece in a, in a cold world. God bless you.